With me is a very interesting lady by the name of Gundela. Gundela is a practitioner of the age-old art of witchcraft, and she also is an expert in all matters that have to do with the occult. Thank you for being with us today, Gundela. How did someone how does someone get involved in, in the occult or in witchcraft? Well, the way I got involved in witchcraft, I think, was quite natural. I simply happened to have been born into a family where it was practiced. My mother was a witch, my grandmother, my great-grandmother. They tell me they can trace it back in my family to the Green Witches of Scotland centuries ago. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't inherit any special power. I, I don't have any power you don't also have. but. If you're brought up in a family where everybody is, well, say a Lutheran, you're more apt to grow up to be a Lutheran than you are a Methodist or a Catholic or a Baptist. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a family where everybody was a witch, and when I was old enough to know what I wanted, I decided to become one too. And that's how you become a witch. You join a coven, you take vows, the same as you join any organization. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, I, su or I suppose, the main ways in which children uh, are involved with the occult is, or is through uh, games or phenomena like uh, tarot cards and Ouija boards. I I'm interested, first of all, in Ouija boards. Is there anything uh, true well, about Ouija boards? You see, a Ouija board is akin to the, the practice of what is called spirit or automatic writing. I prefer to call it automatic writing rather than spirit writing because mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that there's any spirits that come and control <laughs> the... I'm not, I mean, I'm sure there's spirits. I'm not sure that there are what is controlling the board. <laughs> I think more apt the person who is using it is controlling the board even though they're not aware of it. I taught a class one time on uh, automatic writing, and I had this lovely old gentleman in it, and I tried to convince him and convince the whole class that this was nothing to be afraid of, that ghosts were not controlling that board. You were controlling the board, and even though you didn't realize you were doing it, you were doing it yourself. And this old man took his clench at home, and he worked with it, and he came back the next week, and he said, you're wrong. You are absolutely wrong. It's a ghost that's writing my... And I said, well, you know, I could be wrong. I've been wrong about a lot of things in my <laughs> life, and maybe I am about this. But tell me how, why you are so certain that it's a ghost. And he said, because every time I put my hands on that board, it writes dirty words, and I never know those. I don't say those words. I never, and I believe him. I don't believe he ever said these words in his whole life. But he knew what they meant. They were words he had heard, and they were words that maybe he would like to have expressed, and maybe he's held these back in him. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for him to get it out and blame it on the devil or a ghost mm -hmm. or a spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the things that we blame on uh, the devil or a ghost or whatever uh, are our own things that we don't like to own up to. What about ghosts? We had an interesting discussion prior once again to our, our televised portion about ghosts. You believe in ghosts? Oh, of course, don't you? I'm not sure. <laughs> I get a lot more requests for love spells than anything else. Uh, I have all kinds of love spells, you know, spells for men to work on women, spells for women to work on men, stuff you can stir up and put in your soup for your bear. And I believe they work. I really believe they work. What uh, evidence do you have of that? Well, all the letters of people who write back and say, you know that love spell you sent me? It worked. <laughs> now, is there some way to break it? <laughs> because usually when they get them, they find out they don't really yeah. want them after yeah. all. So no? we're, we're talking here then about a power rather than magic. And well, we magic is simply something that you don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. uh, if I want someone to love me, I, I've never loved anybody that didn't love me in return either. T now, take a, take a good look at me. Now, take a good look at me. Here I am. I'm 50 years old. I'm grossly overweight. I have a complexion that is horrible, hair that is terrible. And do you know that there are men who tell me I am beautiful? Now, if I can do that, think what those young girls have going for them. You see, it's all, spell casting is nothing more than what you project to other people through your own belief. And you can affect other people's thoughts of you. You can make anyone you meet believe that you are the most intelligent, the most handsome, the most whatever you want them to believe, simply by the kind of uh, image you project to them, and it may not be the same as the visual image. Uh, do you have any friends that you think are quite good looking, and yet when you look at a picture of them, it's terrible, and you say, they're not photogenic, they don't take a good picture? Sure. Okay. Well, you see, the, the picture is real. The picture is what they really look like. But you see, when you're with that person, you're not affected that much by the visual image. You're affected by what they're projecting, and therefore they are beautiful to you. Mm -hmm. What about your, your, your very attractive black dress?